Virtuoso looked over the pieces quickly. Here we are, receiver and communications pieces that go with it. What good does that do? These things are all over the globe. They must be receiving instructions or navigation data somehow. If we can find out how they're communicating, we can shut them down or find where they're coming from. Darkspeed was impressed. We need to get this back to Arthur. Arthur listened to what Darkspeed and Virtuoso had to say. He was impressed with what he heard and had Virtuoso turn her work over to the London techs. Arthur made sure they knew it was their top priority. Virtuoso was off quickly to see how Cosmos was doing. Arthur had Darkspeed stay behind. You've done good, Arthur said to Darkspeed. Between your alpha teams and the Farrakis hitters, you've saved thousands of lives the past few hours. And the information we've gotten out of the captured villain is proving valuable. If this missile intel pans out, we may be able to stop some of the attacks. How is the fighting going? Darkspeed asked. Not good. The loss of communication is the biggest problem. The villains are dictating when and where. We need to get communications back up. I'll ask my team if there's anything we can do to help on that point. Darkspeed said as he turned and headed back to his team. In the room occupied by the young Alphas, Bioforce used her healing power to wake Cosmos. He stood and decided he was feeling better. Mrs. Pringle had left the room and searched until she had found something to pass as food. Where did Olympian go? Alex asked. He and Virtuoso went to the command center, Bioforce said. How are things in the field? Cosmos asked. Are you sure you're feeling well enough? Bioforce asked. Cosmos smiled and his eyes turned an electric blue. I just need to rest for a bit. Where's my armor? We put it over there, Mr. Pringle said as he helped his son. I'm fine. I just have to suit up. Cosmos busied himself and put his armor on quickly. Here, have something to eat. Mrs. Pringle handed Cosmos a pastry and a bottle of water. I can always eat something later. Cosmos stared at the sugared treat in front of him. You don't know when you might get another chance, Bioforce added. The door opened up and Olympian entered. He smiled when he saw Cosmos in his armor. You loving that donut, Master Chief? What? Cosmos asked with a full mouth. The armor, like in the video game? Never mind. It's good to see you up. Are you ready for the field? Olympian patted Cosmos on the shoulder as he stepped close. I am. How did we do with the hill? Olympian looked at Bioforce. You didn't tell him? He didn't ask. He doesn't know about any of them. Olympian slowed down and showed rare thoughtfulness in how he chose his words. You did your job well and saved most of them, but eight were already gone. There was nothing anyone could do. Little Sophie? She was okay. It was the ones that were very little. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. Bioforce stepped closer. We also lost Hollow, Armory, Kron, Oracle, Ajax, and Dr. Noguchi. Cosmos reacted much the same way she did about her mother. He sat back down and started crying. What's wrong with him? Mrs. Pringle asked. Virtuoso, who could hear Mrs. Pringle's thoughts, stepped back into the room and told the others what was going on. That would be my fault. Virtuoso used her power to make Cosmo's parents understand what happened to Cosmos and why he cared so much for Dr. Noguchi. Did you get what you needed from Miss Waldron? Bioforce asked. Yes, but it's not good, Virtuoso said. What? The LA team was wiped out. Half the Tokyo team is gone, as is half the New York team. A squadron of some kind of fighters tried to destroy Bishamon base. The new Sentinels were able to take them. The Moscow team is gone. A quarter of the Beta teams have been destroyed. The villains are organized. Twenty to thirty will attack a team and then move on to the next one. We need to get into the fight, Olympian said. You wouldn't even know where to go. The information Miss Waldron is getting is after the fact. We need to disable their communications and get ours back on. Cosmos was making himself pay attention to their conversation. What about our satellites? They were destroyed. How are they communicating? Most likely they have their own satellites, but we can't find them. They must be cloaked. Do we have a guess as to where they would be? Why? Virtuoso asked. Space is pretty empty. If we could get close, I could feel for matter easy and no cloak would stop me. That's not a bad idea. I have to let Prism know and then I have to move the other teams. Virtuoso stood and ran from the room. Hey Squirt, thanks for what you did at the hill. I know it hurt you to do it, Olympian said. I'll let the squirt thing slide for going after my family like you did, Cosmos said. I just wish we could have done the same for she. I think Bioforce here is your unsung hero, Mrs. Pringle said. I'm just doing what I can, Bioforce said. No, it's more than that. There are times when I thought a healer was on a team just because Omni said so. Now that things are thick, I know why I made sure every team had a healer. You save lives, Olympian said. 
Prism listened to Virtuoso and her ideas. After just a few minutes, she called Arthur and Darkspeed into a conference room. Prism started drawing on a white board that was in front of the room. Prism talked as she wrote. Like us, they would have their satellites in this band. If the Omni can find these, he can destroy them. I have been able to isolate a frequency used by the stealth missile. I should be able to get you an approximate space the satellite would be. I understand the Omni can replicate technology? His name is Cosmos, and yes he can, Darkspeed said. What were you thinking of having Cosmos do? Virtuoso asked. The techs have been working on a next generation satellite to replace the old ones. They do GPS, communication, data feeds, everything, and they have stealth and defensive capabilities. The trouble is, I only have one and I need 24 in total, Prism said. Well, he can do the hardware, but you'd have to redo the software on each one. Get him on that first. I'll show you where the one is. While he does that, I'll try to find where the villains are hiding theirs. This sounds like a great plan. Do it, Arthur said. Darkspeed and Virtuoso hurried back into the room with the others. Cosmos, come with me. They have work for you to do, Darkspeed said. What kind? Cosmos asked. Making copies of satellites, Virtuoso said as she walked past him. You're not coming? I have to shuffle people in the field. Let's go. Virtuoso held out her hands for Olympian and Bioforce. Virtuoso and the other two disappeared. I'll be back soon, Cosmos said to his parents and left. Prism took Cosmos to one of the upper hangars and showed him the new satellite. It was as big as a bus full of complicated technology. On the side of the thing, it said, Big Bird. How many of these Big Birds do you need? Cosmos asked. We need 24 more and this prototype stays here, Prism said. This could take days, Cosmos said in defeat. I hope not. These will be our eyes and ears. It's what will help us turn the tide. Prism stopped to look at Cosmos as he walked around the Big Bird. Is there anything I can do to help you? I need it quiet. I need to be alone. I need someone to make sure my family is taken care of. And I need lunch. A real lunch. I'll see what I can do. Prism went over to the other techs and had them leave the hangar Cosmos was in. Cosmos put on his helmet and turned off the sound from outside. It seemed quiet and helped him concentrate. He took his armored gloves off and walked up to the Big Bird. The Omnipower came to the surface and his eyes glowed blue. Through his hand, Cosmos could feel it better and he placed both palms on the satellite. The thing was so complicated and he needed to be done quickly. It was almost overwhelming. Start with the basics and do one system at a time, Cosmos thought to himself. Twenty-four Big Bird frames appeared around the hangar, taking up most of the floor space. Next were the fuel system, then the electrical then the computer housing, and then the communications. Cosmos could feel someone enter the room and start walking toward him. He stopped what he was doing and turned to see Prism carrying a cafeteria tray. I have something for you, she said. Cosmos took his helmet off and said, Thank you, I'm starving. It's only been a half an hour and look how much you've done. Do you have the software ready? I do, that would be the hard part. Why? The software can take time to load and it's cumbersome to program these things. Did you ever meet Jack? No, who is he? Jack's a girl, and she can telepathically interface with technology. She can do this quick and well. Really? Prism seemed very interested. She's an alpha brain in training from Los Angeles. I'm going to see if she would like a quick trip to London. Excuse me, Prism said and left. Virtuoso finally contacted she. She, can you talk? No talking. Come and get me, she thought quickly. Virtuoso teleported to Bishamon base next to she. Are you? I'm ready to get back to work, she said. Where's your dad? He's in Tokyo, setting up a new command center. The groundbound villains have been dealt with. Now it's a matter of keeping the Sentinels on patrol. How are the new Sentinels doing? Aces. The fighters they sent would have wasted the old Sentinels. These new ones made from Omnium are wiping out any enemy fighters. That good, huh? Are all the Sentinels in the sky? We don't have enough pilots to keep them all in the air. Several were lost before they could get into a Sentinel. How do you get more pilots? Virtuoso asked. It takes a good two years to train a talented pilot, and they have to be a near miss with a five speed. Pilots like that are worth gold and hard to get. Where are we going next? To London. I have an idea.